Morning everybody, and it's a misty one, so we might not see where many of these golf balls go, but that won't stop us learning. Today's video, we're going to talk about the golf swing takeaway, what it can do, what it can influence, what it can't influence, and then we're also again going to take it to situations on the course to allow you to understand how these kind of ideas that you learn in videos like this, where someone tells you to do X, Y, and Z, actually can be applied in situation on the golf course. Let's show you what I mean. So let's start with some golf swing basics and what the takeaway is about, what it might do. Obviously, it's the start of the golf swing. It's what's going to instigate some of the patterns of your movement and things that you can influence in these first stages of takeaway. So if we accept the takeaway, say from the beginning to somewhere around first parallel here with a club, well, what you do in those movements can influence the club face. So the orientation, the loft, so what happens to this, how much loft or de-loft you take off the club. It can change and influence the direction the club swings on. So what we know is kind of out to ins and into outs and maybe nearer straights, as well as angle of attack. So I can have a steeper angle of attack, a shallow or even a hit up might be influenced by my takeaway. Now, if you think about the different clubs in your golf bag, the way I hit my driver, say let's go with angle of attack. So if the club's going up level or down as it hits the ball, it's very different to what I do with my eight iron. So some of these ideas we take away might change as the different clubs come in, which is why we're going to take it onto the course and show you some situation ideas as we go. So start with club path. So if we're thinking of out to in, people who cut shots, you know, struggle with balls curving off to the right, into out blocks and maybe pull hooks or even target shots or even swinging somewhere straight so a straightest textbook idea with your takeaway you want to be trying to get this club somewhere in the region on first parallel where it's parallel to say where you want the ball to start so let's say i was swinging up the left i was going to cut the ball it's going to be going more to the left but it's still parallel pretty much to my feet position that's if we establish that you aim parallel to the you know the line you're trying to hit the ball let's see you are for this example so influencing that for me i can swing what i would say outside of say this imaginary line towards my target if you like i can swing outside of that and that encourages me then to swing inside to get certain shapes i could do a takeaway where i feel like i pull it more inside so towards me and that makes me feel like i can push the club path more to the right and then straight so to get my zero path if you like to hit a nice straight shot i'm going to feel that it does a little curve at the bottom just coming somewhere in towards me because obviously the club starts out in front of me and it's coming in towards me so it's come inside of the ball line straight isn't straight because it would be out there that's now in line with my feet line so absolutely club path can be influenced by takeaway the next influence would be club face so loft and where it might point so if i put as i pull the club back different twists and turns forearms and wrists different angles in which they orientate the face in different angles as it comes back that might encourage me to deliver a face that points in a different direction to where the club's swinging and now we're going to see curvature so these twists and turns about the face and around the angle of the shaft here definitely as you pull the club back might influence how you deliver the loft so if the ball goes up in the air or not so taking loft off with certain twists and adding more loft and then in turn different shapes because if the face is pointing in a different direction to the path of the club as it hits the ball that's where you're going to start to get the curvature that lots of people struggle with so controlling the path the direction that takeaway goes while at the same time controlling the angle of the face making sure you have some understanding of that two great ways to try and hit better shots with an iron with a driver with any club the same rules apply and what about the third one angle of attack well if i take a club back really low to the ground and i control the angles this to me makes me feel like i get behind the ball because i stretch more so i'm going this way behind it a bit more and that makes me feel like i'm going to be leveled hitting up at this ball more now if i was to take that club up a little steeper so I feel like it comes up quicker still trying to control direction and face this now makes me feel like I could be encouraged to hit down keep the ball down play in these different situations which we're going to get out on the course and play with now a little rule of thumb for everyone watching you will see many golfers with many different versions of takeaways you'll see club faces twisted different directions different angles clubs out in front clubs behind you're going to see variations because you have to mold all these three ideas together to get what we call match up so everything balances so for instance if i'm someone starts with big twists in my grip i'm going to get different face orientations to someone who's got 
neutral grip or twist the other way in their grip. So where at the same time we're going to work today with some basic kind of fundamentals of some checkpoint positions. If you see variations in this and you're a good player, just keep on going. Or the better idea, if you see big variations in any of these positions we're going to talk about and you want to get it fixed, practice these ideas and definitely go and see a pro and get a one-to-one -one lesson to so make sure these ideas that you're using out of these three, you know, controlling face, path and angle of attack, they're applicable to you. Because sometimes these videos can do more damage than good if you're not applying them in the right situation. So some guidelines for you. Let's do some basics. So number one checkpoint, I'm going to put, say, my feet line here on the ground. And you can see I've got the club more from ball position to behind me. And I'm going to reference that position for direction of club path. So first parallel, I want these two clubs to marry up. If I do that, what I might find is I hit a relatively straight shot. We'll call that straight, not that anyone can see it, but it is straight. And then if we do some variations on that theme, if I was to take the club, I'm gonna aim, say straight still, but I'm now gonna move the club out this side and hit the ball. So an easy way to do that would actually be to aim there and then swing on the line of my feet. If the face orientation is in a different place to that path, I'm gonna see little curvatures back towards the target or see some spin, which again can be applied in different situations. And I think you could guess where this one's going. If I bring it more inside, I feel like I might be able to push it out. So having a club on the ground when you practice at home, just a reference is not a bad idea to get some real basic of ideas of a combination of feeling where that club goes and then turning and looking. And you wanna bleed those two together. So feel, does that feel outside? Stop, I've got my eyes closed, open them up, yeah my fields are confirmed by this line on the ground. So that's a really easy benchmarking drill to see where your club paths and what have you are going. Other ideas you can use if you get funky with the direction of that club in that first parallel. It's an oldie but a goodie, just stick the butt end of the club in your tummy button, first parallel before, kind of halfway before you get there, so around midpoint of this takeaway, just let this club come away from your butt and, and just get on your feet line again, but feel the connection at the start of that first part, so feel my hips, shoulders, hands, club head, hands, all moving what feels very connected, very together, because if you're someone who tends to maybe push hands up and out and club comes back, getting these kind of rolls, or even someone who pulls hands in and the club hinges out, this is a great way of feeling that little bit more connection on the takeaway. Again, don't just think that makes you a better player. These are things you need to play with. And again, work with a coach to see, because like Ray Floyd, you teach him to do that. I don't know, people watching this video might not remember Ray Floyd. I think he won maybe six majors. He would start kind of out and hands roll back. It's got to apply to you, basic ideas. So once you've got a grip of some direction that club is swinging on, now we're going to talk about the face orientation. So face orientation for me, I like to see it just slightly turning down to the ground. So the leading edge of the club just slightly down. I don't like seeing too much face up to the sky. If you're going to get it wrong in any way, I like seeing face a little bit more down to the ground. That just encourages sometimes a stronger loft presentation and less curvature off to the right, which obviously for most golfers is like the overriding common theme with bad shots to the golf shots, you know, it's high off to the right shots. And how I'm controlling that, well, I'm controlling that in the feeling of my wrists. So as I move back, if my wrists are moving around this way in any shape or form, so if I roll the pad up to the sky, that tends to turn the face up to the sky. If I go back and try and keep the pad pointing more down towards the ground, that tends to turn the face down to the ground. So if you're finding you want to try and get a little bit more curved to the left, the more you turn that face down to the ground might encourage that. If you feel like you want to calm down and turn to the left, you might find that just turning that pad a little bit more out in front of you here encourages a better delivery. But remember, your face control, the orientation of the face will be subject to what grip positions you start in all these kind of matchup ideas. So again, be careful how you reference this. But I do like students playing with these ideas. Even when they go for their lesson, they then have a bit more of a, a two-way dialogue with the coach. The ideas of like, when I turn it this way, I get this shot. When I turn it that way, I get that shot. Coaches love that because it, it shows that you're really trying to work things out. So if you're someone who tends to fan that club up to the air really easily, drill I like to see people do is just lead hand on the club. So for me, my left, just get your right hand holding the inside of your lead hand. And it's almost like your right hand pulls it back, pulls that club back. This arm will get in a mess, so you're not going to swing with this one, but that will like really allow you to feel this hand turning this way if your wrists are rolling. Great little connection drill to get people just to get that face a little bit more in sync. Definitely see a lot more of this 
then we do see too much of this. Now the last idea, which we're going to really take out onto the course with the combination of those last two, just to show you some variations of shots in a second, is angle of attack. Now don't be scared by that term, you might not have heard it. People think, oh, it's too technical, angle of attack. Angle of attack is something that applies to everyone. Basically the angle the club is attacking the ball as it comes in to hit. It needs to be coming in at some sensible angle subject to the loft for you to get the right launches and hit the best shots. So if I want to encourage with this club a slightly downward attack so with my eight iron here my ball position is centered and I'm going to just do a standard takeaway I'm going to feel that that club gets the first parallel in a reasonable amount of time as in I'm not going to pick this club straight up with wrist hinge almost feel like my hands go down to pick that club up I'm certainly not going to sweep it low and far back because that makes me feel like I'm going to hit the ground back here it's a relatively centered natural kind of takeaway so easy way to reference that is you could literally just stand here turn to the side while staying with the ball so don't lean so literally just rotate and then if you just side bend over again you'll feel that's where that position should be so as in if you're someone who naturally wants to go this way side bend put that in you're going to find you might be a bit better with hitting balls off the tee than you are out the ground so feeling if that club goes up to down low to low or just medium to medium and then you allow your ball position so forward ball position to hit a bit later to get it on the way up centered ball position hit slightly more on the way down that's your benchmark that's kind of like your gold standard that's what you want to happen so simple ideas to get a feeling of what you're doing with your takeaway i've got a ball here a foot behind my original ball if i do my eight iron takeaway i'm literally just nudging it back there where let's say i wanted to turn and get that club going up a little quicker i'm going to go over it i feel like i hit down and then if i was to get my driver here turn them on a tee i'm going to tee the first ball up keep this one a foot behind obviously the club head is much thicker but i'm going to really feel like i'm pushing that for a long time so when it's a foot behind i'm not going to be just coming over the top of that i am going to be feeling lots longer and slower on the way back because i want to get behind the ball to hit up at it so takeaways influencing so much of what can happen down there but what might that mean for you on the golf course like should you ever be playing with these ideas should it just be one takeaway and you hope ball position fits into place with everything else let's take this kind of idealized idea of takeaway that you've probably heard in a hundred videos if you're searching in these kind of terms but let's take it onto the course to see now actually where the real skill in golf might be trying to make these ideas as dynamic as possible let's show you what i mean so let's start from the tee maybe the hardest club of all the clubs to hit now for most golfers this is where you're going to really get your takeaway the most functional the most correct to try and get a repeatable long shot out there as much as possible so for me in this situation yeah this is where i'm really working on my technique of being correct good face angles not adding loft not getting stuck behind not out in front of me so i can get the most neutral ball flight i can get now for lots of golfers who are getting in a little bit of a mess early and not recovering it might be a case in this situation and this is sometimes hard for people to accept but to have a different thought to what they have on other clubs let's send my eight iron that we might hit as the second shot if i hit a decent drive here or a medium iron with more loft i tend to not get as much curvature so maybe I can be really dynamic with that and funk it around, where with this one, I might have to feel like I've got a set pattern which is more sided one way. So what I mean by that, this hole's got out of bounds on the right. Lots of people slice the driver off to the right. This is an occasion where I might actually be anti twisting so feeling like i'm really turning the face down to the ground to get control of this face i might not need to do it with other clubs but for this club to get control and not hit my bad shot in situation this is where i might be starting to really play with the face i might even be really exaggerating pass to try it with face to try and get some curvatures away from trouble so you're going to work on your stock your standard that just repeats 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 but if you have bad shots that come in you need to be able to manage them on the golf course dynamically and having the counter thoughts to practice them somewhere you have loads of angle in your wrist you take angle out so you take it back and add loft and you take it back and take loft off watching the shot shape happen see how you get different patterns of shots you know if there's room on the left which there is here there's another hole i'm always going to try and get my ball getting more to the left side of that one my takeaway might just influence that when it comes to the controlling angle of attack my takeaway will tend to be with the driver definitely longer 
slower or longer and lower not slower it's going to be quite quick actually i'm not going to be picking this club up at all where i might have to with certain irons or if we get closer to the green this club i'm going to be definitely trying to feel like i get behind the ball and that's encouraged if you think about it by keeping that club lower to the ground for longer see that's pulling me across as long as this doesn't go with it and then we get some tilt to allow me to hit my angle of attack that i want with this club which is more on the way up obviously ball position is influencing that as well so have a few drills have a few skills in your takeaway to try and encourage some different shots by playing with the angles you take the club on and the face angle but definitely keep it a little bit more on the lower side with this club try and get a functional drive in play up there as often as possible so we've hit a good drive and we're now just off the fairway and we've got two lies here and they're literally within a foot of each other. This one here is sat up like it's sat nice. It's almost up and this one's just got down in slightly longer grass. But I mean, it's more that it's just brushed the other way with the mower and it's gone right down. Now, these two lies, I might now play with angle of attack because this one I want to be down more. With this one, I'm going to use my normal relatively like slightly down two to four down angle of attack, which to me feels quite neutral. So if you're practicing those elements of basic takeaway like we talked about at the start, now's a great time to use them. So first eight iron here, I'm going to set ball position pretty central. My normal, everything kind of pretty standard. I'm going to play my standard shot. Don't really need to do much with this. It's just going to come out nice and normal. I don't need to manipulate the lie. This one's quite different. So this one, I will move ball positions back. So there's some fundamental changes to my setup. This tends to push handle forwards. Now this makes me feel like I want to get a little bit more. See what I'm doing there in my takeaway. I'm picking that club up. I'm kind of mimicking going down at this one a lot more. Because if I play my standard angle of attack on this, I'm just going to tangle with the grass. Ball position change, handle slight change, but now I'm going to try and really get down at this. So I'm going to pick up and then down. Really to punch that one out and forwards. So your setup will influence takeaway, but your takeaway also has to influence the shape, shot and delivery you want. You've got to be getting dynamic in the many situations. These balls are a foot away from each other. From the tee, they would look like equal drives. Now, even when you get closer to the green, your takeaway plays an influential role. If I play pretty much a stock chip here, I'm just going to do similar to my iron. I'm not really thinking about coming up. I'm not thinking about staying low or round or out. I'm just doing my standard takeaway, if you like. But let's pretend I want to get this one lower. Same loft, lower handle forwards. Now, this one, so I don't dig too much, I'm going to feel like I come around and almost feel like I'm hitting like a low hook with this one it's not going to happen but that's the feeling and i'm getting that kind of lower shooting out shot face not in the right direction um, but i am playing with i'm influencing my takeaway with that one to then influence my angle of attack to keep it shallow because the handle's forward i don't want to dig down i just want to take loft off that's coming from there even the direction of my takeaway was changing to try and get the feeling of a rolling lower loft off if we're going to go kind of for the high flop shot again i'm going to stay quite shallow but i'm definitely going to feel like i'm rolling even a little bit of angle on with that face to try and get that one really popping up in the air and lob it up there so my takeaway from t to on the fairway to green is influencing the nuances of strike and the brilliant dynamicness of this sport but starting from a fundamental baseline, which has got some level of repeatability for me. And again, they can be very different for lots of players, but if you use those baselines that we set out at the beginning, get those working for you and then play with them, you're gonna be a more skilled golfer and you're not gonna be the kind of horrible one dimensional golfers that I see who maybe follow the old YouTube tips ideas a little too closely. Let me know in the comments down below if this video helps make sense or not. If you want to see more of them, as always, hit those comments up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, give it a subscribe to get loads of free golf tips. Also, if you are subscribed, make sure you've got the bell icon turned on. You won't miss a great upload. Thanks for watching, everybody.